Archaeologists have been digging for years near the Steppe Pyramid of Josa, in the necropolis of Saqqara, near Cairo. They found a lot of old things last year, like mummies and bronze statues from about 2,500 years ago. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about what archaeologists found when they found a 52-foot-long lost Egyptian papyrus. Make sure to watch the whole video, because it will be very interesting. Let's get started. They discovered 250 painted coffins with well-preserved mummies, in addition to 150 bronze statues. The sacred animals and statues were among the treasures they discovered. Archaeologists have not made any significant discoveries in the past century. During the excavation of Saqqara, a lengthy ancient papyrus was discovered in one of the city's about 250 tombs. During the fourth season of excavations, directed by Mustafa Wasari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, an old scroll was discovered. After it was completely restored and translated, it became evident that the object was actually 16 meters long, despite the fact that at first, scientists believed that it was just 9 meters long. The repair of the papyrus took place at the laboratory of the Egyptian Museum in Terraria. The papyrus, which was renamed the Waziri Papyrus after Mustafa Wasari, was given that name. This papyrus was the very first one to be discovered and named after an Egyptian. It was found by an Egyptian. It is scheduled to be displayed during the ceremonial opening of the large Egyptian museum in Giza. The new museum is supposed to be the biggest archaeological museum in the world. It will hold over 100 and 2,000 artifacts from ancient Egypt, including many from the tomb of Tutankhamun. The museum is expected to get millions of visitors every year and will be a major tourist attraction in Egypt on January 14, when the Egyptian Archaeologists' Day Ceremony takes place. Wazari also said that the papyrus has writings from the Book of the Dead. For the ancient Egyptians, death and the afterlife were so complicated that they wrote a lot about them. All of these are neatly recorded in what is now called the Book of the Dead. It is an ancient Egyptian funerary text that was written on papyrus scrolls and buried with the dead in their tombs. The Book of the Dead had declarations, hymns, and spells that were meant to help the dead get through the dangerous journey to the afterlife. As early as the Third Dynasty of Egypt, between 2670 and 2613 BCE, Religious texts were written on sarcophagi and the walls of pyramids. These are called the pyramid texts, and they talk about the journey to the afterlife. Only kings were buried with these texts, which had spells and incantations to help the king's soul reach the heavens. There is evidence for the coffin text at the end of the Old Kingdom, and it was still used during the First Intermediate Period and the Early Middle Kingdom. During the Old Kingdom, only the king was guaranteed to live on in the next world, but that changed with the beginning of the first intermediate period. The spells and pictures in the Book of the Dead were written on papyrus and left with the dead in their tombs. The Book of the Dead was a collection of spells, and even though many of them were similar, each copy was carefully put together for a specific person. However, every copy of the Book of the Dead had the same spell, which is now known as Spell 125. It is one of the most famous pieces of Egyptian art. The most recent one is the Marvel TV show Moon Knight, which talks about how Osiris judged the heart in the Hall of Truth, also called the Hall of Two Truths, because it was important for the soul to pass the weighing of the heart in order to get to paradise. Thoth, Anubis, and the 42 judges were thought to be the most important information the dead could bring with them. According to the Book of the Dead, the soul would meet the jackal-headed god Anubis, who would lead them from their tomb to the Hall of Truth, where they would wait in line for their judgment. When it was their turn, Anubis would take them to face Cirrus, the god of the dead, and Thoth, the god of writing and wisdom, where they would confess their sins. Osiris put the heart on the golden scales and used the white feather of Maat to measure its weight. If the person's heart weighed less than the feather, they were able to go to the next stage of the process. If the heart was heavier than the feather, it was placed on the floor for the emmet to devour. If the feather was lighter, the heart was kept. The devourer of the dead is the following. 
In ancient Egyptian mythology, the concept of hell did not exist, and the belief was that if a deceased person's heart was consumed, they would cease to exist. This was referred to as the Great Death, and it was considered to be the worst possible outcome for a person's life. If the heart was accurately measured, the soul of the deceased individual would travel to Lily Lake. There, the journey of the soul may either be fraught with peril or as serene as a simple stroll down the lakeshore, depending on the version. Hef, the divine ferryman, was impolite and displeasing to be around while he waited for them. Before the soul could proceed to the reed fields, they were required to demonstrate to him one final time that they were worthy of his trust. Even though the majority of what we know about ancient Egypt comes from stories about death, the Egyptians were a culture that valued life and their land so highly that their afterlife was a reflection of their life on earth. Despite this, the majority of what we know about ancient Egypt comes from stories about death. They believed that death was simply a passage into the next life, and that passage began with a perilous voyage filled with trials and formidable gods who checked to see if they had led a life that was worthy of being lived. Leave a comment below and tell us what you think. If you liked the video, give it thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel to see more great videos.